three. Why are American children more susceptible to poverty? It's a question my colleague, Elaine Reyes, put to the CEO and president of the One organization, Michael Elliott. Well, you know, historically in the world, uh, the, the, the greatest challenges, whether it's in poverty or indeed in health, uh, have been children, have not been older people. It's been children who've died young, it's been children who've been most susceptible to, uh, to awful diseases. It's been children for whom poverty has had life-threatening uh, implications. And that's been true everywhere. That's been true everywhere. One of the extraordinary things that we've seen in the last 10 years is that the incidence of child deaths, of deaths under five, uh, has been reduced all over the world. So the, so the pattern that you point out in the United States is not an unusual pattern. Um, China is seeing a different sort of trend, as you mentioned. According to one study, the number of people living in absolute poverty has decreased over time from 260 million to about 14 million today. That's a big number. Are countries like China doing something that others can learn from? Well, I, I lived in Hong Kong for a while. I've traveled very widely in China. I know, I know China as well as, uh, as, as anyone who's a frequent visitor uh, can know it. I mean, I don't pretend to know every corner of it. And I think the Chinese story has been extraordinary in the last 30 years. Uh, I think the extent to which China has been able to lift hundreds of millions of people out of extreme poverty is one of the things that's genuinely changed the world, genuinely changed the world. And how's it happened? I think, you know, the key thing that happened in China is that you've had 30 years of very strong economic growth. Uh, you've had a, a, an opening up uh, of, uh, of, uh, of the marketplace. You've had the price system uh, liberalized so that initially, 25, 30 years ago, farmers in Anhui province or whatever it was uh, were able to sell their excess, uh, their excess produce in markets. Uh, that lifted rural incomes. So it's been a fantastic story. There's no question about it. Michael, we here in the West are in the so-called season of giving. For our viewers out there watching this around the world, uh, what can they do to help? Well, uh, you can join one. You can go to one.org and join one of our campaigns. Uh, all over the world, uh, you see more and more people recognizing that we're part of a, of a single uh, humanity, uh, that uh, what happens to the least of us uh, affects all of us, and uh, you see governments doing what we, you, you see people doing what we do, which is lobbying their governments to make sure the vital money flows from the richer parts of the world to the poorer parts of the world so that we can fight HIV AIDS, we can eradicate malaria, we can fight measles, we can bring clean water and sanitation to places that don't have it, we can increase investment in agriculture, we can make sure that a billion little kids don't go to bed hungry every night. Michael Elliott, thank you so much for your time and your insight. Elaine, great pleasure.